The Mark Thompson Show. Something special. Uh, yeah. I will tell you that you know this guy. Normally it comes in on Fridays. And when you hear the sound of his arrival, you'll know he comes and goes on a rainbow. Michael Snyder from the Marina Times and from the longtime world as culture blaster across music, across movies, across television. And there's something coming to the Bay Area that Michael really wanted to get out there because it really is something special. Michael, welcome, first of all. Well, thank you, Mark. I uh, I would have brought my lucky charms, especially relevant since what I'm going to be talking about is the mostly British film festival. Because I came in on a rainbow. That's the lucky charms reference. Oh, I get it. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucky charms. So what is the mostly British film festival, Michael, and where well, is it? I- I got a, it, it's in San Francisco at the Vogue Theater, and it's coming up uh, on February 9th and runs till the 16th. And people who know me well know me that I'm, uh, know that I'm an Anglophile. I mean, even when I was a kid, I was fascinated by the British invasion music and TV programs like uh, Secret Agent and The Avengers. And uh, I love Monty Python. So with that in mind, this is right up my alley. But let me also point out that British cuisine, no thank you. I I have never been able to bring myself to eat a black pudding or uh, toad in the hole or, I mean, yeah. The (laughs) names themselves. They've they've stepped up their cuisine game. It used to really be bad, right? Yeah, I know. It's much better. In fact, in London. Now you have Gordon Ramsay and all the rest of them that are British or, you know. I know, but if, if you're talking about actual British cuisine, uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I hear figgy pudding is better than black pudding, but I still, yeah, I can't get past the name. Anyway. You know, I Anglo- have to tell you one story then related to British pudding and British okay. uh, cuisine. Uh, you know, I I went to Oxford uh, uh, in addition to, you know, I was attended Oxford. Okay. What? Yes, I'm sorry. Nothing about my world would suggest that I uh, attended this prestigious institution, but I did. Oxford in England. So I'm there, and there you eat at this uh, long mess hall. It's like, uh, really like Harry Potter. You're supposed to wear <laughs> jackets, and you're sitting there at this long wooden table, and they serve the most disgusting food every night. And so, I mean, it's it's... It's additionally insulting that you need to dress up for this food. So I remember that one Friday, they served this plate. It was put down in front of me. And there is a fish on the plate completely intact, except it's dead. Okay, but it was completely, it looked like it could come to life at any moment. And then next to the fish was fries, of course. It's fish and chips. (laughs) <laughs> and I was, uh, Michael, I was so close to retching. I <laughs> turned to my buddy and I said, I'm going to completely rotate around so my back is to this table and please get rid of this fish. I don't care where you where it goes or what you do with it. And I turned around and thankfully, like the good buddy he was, when I turned back around, It was just the chips and no fish on my plate. And that is the raw nature of British cuisine back then, okay, when I was in college. Since then, they stepped their game up, but the reputation they have has carried them, right? I mean, it has carried them along as a place you don't want to eat. Well, look, look. First off, I have three questions. Question number one: <laughs> Did the did the fish's eye follow you around the mess hall? Did it? it was it one of those like a like a painting? I, I still feel watched by that fish. Number two: uh, Were you any good at Quidditch? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harry you really Potter are an reference. Anglophile. Yeah, uh, we have. Uh, but uh, the number. And what three, was your third question? Uh, my third question is: How can we start talking about the mostly British film festival? <laughs> so, yeah that's right exercise me all right tell me michael about the almost british film festival okay before so, i interrupt with another boring story about my uh, my life in britain 
Hey, which I one do you use, Mark about, Thompson? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, knew, I knew nothing about that, and I was happy to hear the story, and I'm going to quiz you at some other juncture about your escapades at Oxford. But um, these days, so many uh, films and actors from the UK, from Ireland, Australia, uh, with RRR from India, South Africa, and New Zealand um, are part of the grand tapestry of global cinema. We see these movies over here in bits and pieces. We don't see everything, but, um, you know, it's kind of wonderful that uh, the people behind the Mostly British Film Festival for 15 uh, go-rounds have been doing this wonderful compendium of recent and vintage films for the uh, Bay Area audience. And, you know, the, the Vogue Theater is not the most comfortable place in the world, but it's amazing when something great on screen is happening before you, uh, you don't really care. Uh, you're enraptured by the movie and the selections that the uh, directors of the Mostly British Film Festival have pulled together, uh, including new feature films, documentaries, shorts, and again, classics out of the vaults, all pretty wonderful. And um, uh, shall I give you a couple details of this? Yes, please. Absolutely. Okay. So it's going to start on the night of February 9th with a uh, reception at 530. But this is what's really cool. The kickoff uh, of the uh, festival will be a 730 p.m. screening of Emily, which is kind of um, a mix of biography and, I guess, conjecture about the Victorian author Emily Bronte. And it's actually written and directed by the Australian actress Frances O'Connor. And it features the Anglo-French star on the rise, Emma Mackey. If you've watched Sex Education on um, Netflix, she's the bad girl who is kind of the uh, female lead of Sex Education. She's absolutely great. You wouldn't know that she uh, actually can speak uh, perfect French and also co-starred as Gustave Eiffel's uh, lady love in the recent French biopic Eiffel. She plays Bronte, and I bet you it's going to be uh, a corker. I just love her, and I'm really excited to see this film. Um, I have not had a chance to see it. And the uh, festival closes on the 16th with a, a 7.30 p.m. showing of The Lost King, uh, a movie that I have seen, which is about the actual 21st century search for the remains of King Richard III. Uh, this wow. is a, a true story and a very, very cool movie. And uh, it stars uh, Oscar nominee and uh, Golden Globe winner uh, Sally Hawkins. And she was in The Shape of Water and Blue Jasmine. And there'll be a little party after that uh, at the Vogue. I have to say that um, The Lost King was, was a real treat. And it's uh, actually written by Steve Coogan, the great comic actor from the UK. Uh, love, him. love him, love him, love him. We've seen in a variety of things. Uh, but basically, the true story is a Scottish office worker uh, decides she's going to find the actual location of Richard III's remains and rehabilitate his villainous image because she's kind of upset that he's always depicted like by Shakespeare as a real <laughs> bastard. So the movie is directed by Stephen Frears, uh, who did, um, for instance, Dangerous Liaisons and The Queen. So you got some real talent. He's also behind brilliant. The camera. Wow. Yeah. And uh, this is an authentic and uh, fascinating quest. And I love the, the whole uh, against the odds uh, and the establishment battle of the heroine, who also is getting, you know, belittled by some of her male counterparts, of course. And uh, I, you know, it, it was it was very entertaining. It's kind of a crowd pleasing movie, but there's a lot of cool stuff in between, uh, including. Are you ready for this? There's a three film uh, show or uh, installment uh, in the context of the festival called Great Dames When They Were Young. And it's a retrospective of early career movies starring Helen Mirren, Maggie Smith, and Judy Dench. And to see Helen Mirren as a nubile young woman, uh, she was an absolute knockout. And she uh, stars what? in Age of Consent. Age of How consent. dare you, Albert? Uh, she was, a, she was a young woman and a knockout. 
Right. Uh, she, yeah. uh, she stars in um, Age of Consent, which is yes. from 69, and it's a sort of comic drama. Uh, and uh, What? You know, it, God, it's stop it. quite, quite good. Go ahead. Um, Michael, don't uh, be distracted by this. What's the name of the film again, please? Uh, Age of Consent, of course. What? <laughs> okay, all right. Yes. Uh, and uh, there's also uh, Love and Pain and the Whole Damn Thing with Maggie Smith and uh, the very young Judy Dench, uh, in four in the morning, and she won the BAFTA for most promising newcomer. That one is from '65. So you've got wow. that going on, and you've got like some really, uh, I guess, you're know, perfect for this sort of festival and this sort of um, you know corner of the world. For instance, there is a movie uh, that's getting a lot of really good buzz, uh, and it's um, basically uh, uh, it's. It's about a lesbian, a closeted lesbian school teacher. And uh, wow. this what? woman. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and um, she basically is living in the uh, homophobic uh, Margaret Thatcher era. And uh, it's kind of not a comfortable situation for her. And she doesn't know quite what to do. And then she encounters a kid in her class. And all of a sudden, uh, her feelings start bubbling to the surface and she's in conflict. It's called Blue Gene. And, wow. Um, it, That's it's, sort of a, a forbidden love meets uh, another forbidden love, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I mean I there's never been anything like this. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but, but can I ask you something that is sort of adjacent to that? Sure. Wasn't there a movie, I think it was called Notes on a Scandal, which sort of was similarly about uh, something that took place in a school and was also a forbidden love? Wasn't that British or not? That, that sounds about right. It really does. Uh, uh, but yeah. uh, I'm it really didn't not involve sure. lesbian love, but it involved yeah. underage love, I think. I've not seen it. Um, I have to uh, also point out some of the documentaries uh, are really cool. I've seen one of them. Um, a movie uh, entitled If These Walls Could Sing, and it's basically a documentary about EMI Abbey Road Studios, and it's run from the 50s to um, today, and it features, uh, among other people, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Oddly enough, it's uh, directed by Mary McCartney, who seems to be Paul McCartney's daughter. I wonder how she convinced Paul and Uncle Ringo <laughs> to show up. But What? It's what, really, what? It, it, it's, it's a wonderful, it's not a great documentary, but it's a wonderful look at the studio and its history, and you learn various things about it, and you have interviews uh, with the likes of Jimmy Page, and get ready for this, Mark, because I know this is in your wheelhouse. Jimmy Page reveals that one of his Abbey Road memories as a musician was being part of John Barry's orchestra recording the Shirley Bassey title song of Goldfinger, the James Bond classic. I love this. Jimmy Page. I love this. Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin and, of course, originally the Yardbirds played. He was oh. the guitarist on the session. And wow. I, it, there's a, yeah, I can't. Ha I can't play more than that because I got a copyright strike. We don't I, want I that, might but... get a copyright strike with just that. But anyway, but I, I want you to know something about this. Page's anecdote points out that they had to play to uh, what was on screen to time it out. And they had Shirley there and the full orchestra. And John Barry said, we have to go all the way to the end of the credits, Shirley. Can you hold that last note? And in fact, if you've ever heard uh, the full length Goldfinger, you know, she's holding and holding and holding. And <laughs> Paige says at the end of it, she nearly collapses and is glowering at John Barry. I, I mean, it's a great story. And I, Elton John is interviewed, and he talks a little bit about uh, having been the pianist on the uh, Hollies, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. And if you listen to that single, it's wow. clearly it's clearly Elton John on piano. It even sounds like one of his songs. Um, oh, my God. Did you know that before the movie? Uh, that it was I, Elton that, John on, on the Holly song? I did not. So I feel very um, I, I'm wow. sheepish about it because I am, you know, Mr. Yeah, Pop you're music. You're Mr. Music. You're Mr. Culture Blaster. My man. Yeah. I'm so I am. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of uh, disgusted with myself about this. Uh, <laughs> now, there's also um, a documentary called Real Britannia, which is a bunch of famous British filmmakers talking about 
what constitutes British cinema. I haven't seen this yet, but um, it's a, a mini series from BritBox, and um, I'm kind of excited to check that out. Um, let me think. There's a couple other things I wanted to point out because, again, it's a rich uh, selection I'm of still, movies. I can't get over the fact that you said, and I know you had seen it, Notes on a Scandal. I mean, it was with Kate Blanchett and Judy Dench. You saw it, and you know, reviewed I'm it. I know. I'm kidding. Oh, you were just kidding. you were just put you were just pawning you me off when I was trying to go. Wasn't that yeah. sort of a? Yeah. All right, I see what you're doing, Michael. I never mind. And I wanted to apologize so, um, to the Asian community, the Asian American <laughs> right. community. So from New Zealand, there's something called Juniper with Charlotte Rampling, the great Charlotte Rampling. Uh, it's wow. kind of a, a, a family saga, uh, and she plays a, a photographer, a war photographer, and uh, a hard-drinking war photographer, from what I understand. I haven't seen that. But as far as movies I have seen, I will just quickly uh, tell you. Um, quickly, Michael, that, because you're over time as usual. Um, Rogue Agent, which we've reviewed here on the Mark Thompson Show, which mm -hmm. is a, a film about a, an actual scam artist named Robert Freeguard, who um, uh, is out there saying he's recruiting people for MI5, but in fact, uh, he's a, a, a horrifying um, a monster of a person. Uh, and um, God's that's a creatures. dramatic film, though, right? That was uh, is, Rogue Agent. No, no, yeah. it's based on a true story. But it's a true story. No, I get it. Okay. It, it yeah. is, but uh, there's a great cat and mouse uh, game between Gemma Arterton as one of his targets, um, uh, and the uh, the villain himself, um, uh, uh, played by James Norton. God's creatures we reviewed uh, here on the Mark Thompson show. Um, and uh, just um, After Sun, which is on a lot of best of 2022 lists, but didn't get wide distribution. Uh, there's where can a, people uh, see the Where can people see the whole whole list? Can you let him finish, sir? I, I cannot uh, let him that's finish. What I'm sorry. I'm gonna get, I was going to get to that. I was going to get to okay. that. Uh, well, I they need can you to get to see, it now, please. Yeah, yes, they can see the list at mostlybritish.org. O R G. Okay, mostlybritish.org. Yes, uh, and, and uh, you'll get the full length of. The offerings, the full list of the offerings. Yes. And that's festival. the Vogue Theater in the city, right? Yes. Festival information and uh, the stuff about tickets and what have you. 3290 Sacramento Street, the Vogue Theater, uh, the Mostly British Film Festival from February 9th to 16th. You know, I think we wouldn't have gone over if we didn't have to hear about Oxford and the Fish. But okay. It was a little, uh, you know, I, when you come on. I like to share with you, you know, the, the someone who'll listen to your boring stories. <laughs> <laughs> I view Michael as someone who'll listen to my boring stories. Right. And uh, sadly, you have to uh, live with that. I think I we gave you me. ample time, Michael. You have no complaints well, on this show. We'll go to the green room and talk further about, uh, again, your experiences as a Quidditch player. Uh, at I Oxford. will remind people that Michael joins us every Friday on this program at around 11.35. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye, Michael. So long, everybody. The Mark Thompson Show. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.